Today, we're gonna look at the best story that Gary Goleman has ever told. It's about the men and one woman who abbreviated all 50 states down to two letters. But first, I wanna look at his debut album. Gary Goleman establishes himself as a rather absurd comic, but the key to Gary's style is in his ability to make absolutely hilarious pieces of comedy from seemingly innocuous or ostensibly boring subjects. However, when you look under the hood a little bit, you can trace his skill back to a couple of main pillars. The first is in his varied and heavy use of vocabulary, and the second is in his mastery of using non sequiturs and tangents to make any story interesting. Vocabulary is something that is near and dear to Gary Goldman's heart. On the James Ottridge show, he expressed, One of the things that's really funny is reminding people of a word they forgot they knew. And he uses vocabulary alone to make jokes, usually with one of two techniques. The first is wordplay, and the second is archaic vocabulary. Few people can play with words quite like Gary Goldman. And a great first example is the way he talks about his love for cookies. <laughs> cookie. A lot of things are cooked, but that's the cookie. This bit is so simple and it goes by so quickly that you end up thinking about it even after the joke is finished. These examples are from 2005, but the techniques he uses here remain a mainstay of his comedy. What's great about this is that it's effective on its own for short laughs, but Gary strings them together quickly in a row in order to build the humor. Double stuff. Same price for double the stuff. He's also able to use this technique to segue himself into different topics, which he can eventually loop back to his main point. In this bit, he starts down a tangent about Girl Scouts, but makes several small jokes that eventually bring him back to cookies. The Girl Scouts. Let's talk about the Girl Scouts. Make cookies, call themselves brownies, scandalous. He tangents, tells two jokes about the Girl Scouts, but finishes the tangent by talking about cookies. I don't, I don't know where Samoa is, I've never been to Samoa, but I'm telling you something, if that island is anywhere near as delicious as the cookie that bears its name, well, set a course for adventure, your mind on a new romance. I, I don't think you're supposed to know that these lyrics are from the Love Boat theme song, but they are. Gary's skill is in being able to rattle these things off as if they're off the top of his head, giving his comedy this sort of meandering feel to it but with a little digging, you can see the work that goes into the wording. After all, Samoa, which may seem at first glance to be randomly chosen, perfectly ties in with the Love Boat lyrics. Samoa is an island, and the Love Boat is about a cruise liner. Those fit together much better than Thin Mints or Tagalongs would have. On the other hand, a great example of how he plays with vocabulary is in this bit where he plays on a popular high school cheerleading slogan, to be aggressive. Was there one player out there confused, B-E-A-G-G-G? Oh, oh, be aggressive, okay. Okay, I thought you were saying to be egregious. I don't even know what that means. The joke starts with a rather absurd mix-up. After all, who would mistake aggressive for egregious on a football field? But he doesn't let the premise go. In fact, he quickens his pace, cycling through not one, but two other examples. I thought you said be gregarious. I told my opponent I loved his hair. Oh my gosh. I, I thought you said be agrarian. I tried to convert the entire economy to farming, despite the global dependence on high tech and fossil fuels. I guess. These three words don't just sound similar, they're all adjectives, which helps with confusion to aggressive, and it makes it believable. But it's just a little absurd because the words themselves are uncommon, especially with gregarious and agrarian, because their usage has been going nothing but down since the late 20th century. The final layer is putting an absurd twist on a rather ordinary subject. Nine minutes is not a snooze, 90 minutes. That's a snooze. Now, that's moderately clever, but what drives us away from pure wordplay and more towards absurdist territory is how he takes the dark, grim reality of what the alarm clock is and immediately juxtaposes it with this so very sweet fairy tale. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Where what are you, sleeping? Listen, we're gonna have to get moving in a couple of minutes. I don't want to alarm you. <laughs> While he's certainly neither the first nor the last comedian to adopt the pseudo-rambling technique of telling jokes, what differentiates Gary from other comedians like Mark Maron or Louis Black or Mike Birbiglia is that these sequences of jokes always remain upbeat. I have never once walked out of a Gary Gullman show feeling sadder than when I walked in. But let's talk about this story. It recaps a documentary. It's about the men and one woman who abbreviated all 50 states down to two letters. But the joke doesn't actually start here. 
It starts a couple minutes earlier. I wanted to recommend uh, two documentaries. One, Helvetica. Okay, a little context. Helvetica is a documentary. It is about the font Helvetica. It does have 7.2 stars on IMDb, and it actually does spend its entire 80 minute runtime talking about the typeface with a great degree of seriousness and reverence. And Gary Goleman gave it five stars and immediately dives in to the wordplay. Is it about fonts? It's about font. <laughs> All right, now we're at square one. All this information is a prelude to his actual joke about abbreviating the states down to two letters. But we basically start off on a tangent, and that really sets the tone for the rest of the bit. So that one's great. Here's another one. It's about the men and one woman who abbreviated all 50 states down to two letters. <laughs> now, this one comes with a little uh, preface. Or if it's the first time you heard that word said out loud, a little preface. Why this is interesting is that after starting this joke, the first thing he does is take a sharp left turn and begin describing the different ways that people pronounce preface. And he does it so well that it takes you a second to remember that this is not what we're here to talk about. Side note on preface. The definition for preface is a noun, meaning an introduction to a book typically stating its subject, scope, or aims. So we immediately start to see a great choice of diction within this bit. This is a subtle but well-chosen word in context because preface comes in front of books. Gary's letting you know right off the bat that this is going to take a while. Also, this is neither a short nor a simple tangent, as it has multiple subjects. I was also saying quinoa. This then segues into how do you pronounce quinoa, and we're now several minutes into this joke and he still hasn't really started the bit. And yet, Everyone's still laughing. We do eventually, though, get to the bit. So the preface is this. It's a movie about the men and one woman who abbreviated all 50 states down to two letters. He needs to recap what this bit is about because it's been so long since we've been on topic that most people have completely forgotten what we're actually here to discuss. However, just because he's actually started talking about the bit's main premise doesn't mean he gets to the point quickly. First, he needs to describe the anarchy of the way things were. So, first we had a preface, and now we have an introduction. It was chaos. Massachusetts was M-A-S-S period. New York was N-Y, but like Utah was Utah. A core piece to his comedy, wordplay, is still very much alive here, as is the way that he approaches it. A quick light joke, and then we see him pick up the pace. They assembled a ragtag outfit of rogues, misfits, and ne'er-do-wells. How often do well? Nah. You would be forgiven for not immediately recognizing this word after all its popularity peaked in the early 1700s and it's been declining ever since. But briefly, ne'er is a contraction of never, and ne'er do well is a noun meaning a particularly lazy person. They started off, they thought it was gonna be easy. Oh no. I said, what's the first one? Alabama, AL. Oh my God, this is easy. We're gonna be finished before they stop serving breakfast in the hotel restaurant. And the boss said, guys, if we finish before they stop serving breakfast, breakfast is on me. This begins our second major break from the main thread and the third segue topic. The main notes of this tangent are again, his repeated use of vocabulary and wordplay. It goes on for a bit, but here's a quick example. Did you just say holiday sauce? It's Hollandaise, you fucking moron. <laughs> and the boss said, guys, can we get back to abbreviating the states? We still have 49 left. And then we wander back to our main story. I said, what's next? Alaska. Everybody cool with AL? Now this is where the tangent pays off. This only works if you've just had a two minute tangent about eggs and the correct pronunciation of Hollandaise. Imagine it without that break, you wouldn't even comprehend how they forgot. But because Gary took you on this roundabout journey with him, and because he does it so well and so often, you forgot for just a moment what this whole story is even about. And by extension, you see how these brave men and one woman might have forgotten also. For contrast, take a look at it side by side. I said, what's the first one? Alabama, AL. Oh my God, this is easy. We're gonna be finished before they stop serving breakfast in the hotel restaurant. 
I said, what's next? Alaska. Everybody cool with AL? <laughs> it's not funny. It's just painfully obvious. This quickly swings into another tangent, this time about secretaries in the late 20th century office buildings, but after a little more than a minute, the main use of this non sequitur, introducing the wisecracking secretary Dottie, ends up being a callback to the last non sequitur. And she said, uh, it's Hollandaise, you fucking moron. <laughs> At this point, he picks up the pace dramatically, which is consistent with his earlier works, but this is a much more complicated and involved string of thoughts. That being said, even though he picks up his pace, he never abandons his meandering style. He's still weaving callbacks, forgotten words, and wordplay into the narrative, simply at much quicker speeds. Somebody needs a drink. Not now, Donnie! <laughs> you vulgar lush. They brought in a contractor. Not a contractor, a contractor. A man who made words smaller. The biggest laughs of this joke are not part of the main story. And the majority of the time is not spent on the main story. Which leads you to conclude that it's not about the story so much as it is the way he tells it. He does, however, wrap up the story. Long story short, they made it on time for breakfast. <laughs> 